Hey traders, Akil Stokes here, and welcome back to another episode of The Trading Block. It is Monday, my favorite day of the week, and well, today was even more special than usual. Why, you ask? Well, because we had a very special guest attend our private strategy lab this morning. My, uh, my good buddy, also my trading mentor and trading coach, Mr. Jason Stapleton. Right? You see, back in February, we took our old training course, the 12-week transformation, and we really gave it a facelift. And you know, we wanted to do something that involved all of the coaches at Trade Empowered instead of just myself. So we took Jason Stapleton, we took myself, we took Charles Miles, we took Jason Greystone, and we all worked together on putting together a flagship program to teach you everything we know about trading. And recently, we just updated the money management portion of our trading course, where we, we teach traders about really the, the icing that goes on top of the cake. So the, the, the real difference between making a little bit of money in the market to making those big gains that you see many people talk about. So Jason Stapleton came in this morning to our strategy lab to field any questions about the recent training material. And of course, if you know Jason, whenever he opens his mouth, uh, good things tend to spew out. So we had a very motivational and inspiring speech from him this morning. And that's what I want to show you guys. Now, the whole lesson is about uh, an hour long. So obviously, I'm not going to upload the entire hour to YouTube, but I'm going to try and pick out some of the better moments and hopefully just give you guys something that can motivate you on this Monday and really get you fired up for the rest of your trading week. And I, while you guys are thinking up your questions, uh, I will just say this. When it comes to, as I said in the beginning of the money management training, everybody likes this part because now we start talking about money and you start seeing how compounding works when, when you start applying really good money management of being able to increase your overall return while still maintaining a limited drawdown. That's something that I, I remember when I was first learning how to trade the, the the idea that somehow you could increase profits without increasing risk, which is really what we're talking about doing, was a, was a completely foreign concept to me. I would have told you that's not mathematically possible to do because as you add more position size, you are naturally going to increase your risk. And so how is it that a guy is going to come out of this uh, ahead if he is – if he's increasing his position size, you're going to have to have an, a correlating increase in drawdown. And the truth is you don't have to do that. When we start talking about this stuff, it is everybody gets excited about it. And, and I will warn you that it is not going to work for you if you're not consistent. If you, if you can't make money without this, because remember, the first thing we talked about was positive expectancy. Positive expectancy is is the the secret to making sure that you can you have a system that will produce profits and you know, once you've got that well then it's just a matter of trading that consistently any additional money that you can make on top of that any ways that we can improve it through money management is secondary to you guys having the discipline to trade day in and day out regardless of the market conditions and what the market is throwing at you so keep that in mind as you're going along um, because that is, that's going to be the difference between your failure and your success long term. I just, I just saw a post from a guy on Facebook. His name is Paul Salvinson. Uh, most people know him as Salvo. He is a, a five-time Grammy Award winning, I think it was five the last time I checked, five-time Grammy Award winning audio producer. And uh, he, he mixes audio, largely in the Christian music space, although he's done stuff all over the board. And he took, the, he took my course about three years ago, and he just posted something online. He's been working at it diligently, and his, his, his daughter went through some very traumatic, she had a brain hemorrhage. And so that basically he had to take out like a year and a half to two years of not really focusing on training to, trading to help his daughter uh, walk again and talk again and, and she's made just a miraculous comeback it's really incredible what she's been able to do and he posted something online showing his performance 200 percent return or something like that over the course of the last however many months he had he'd been doing it and he, and he just said I'm just so excited I've been working at this for such a long time and and it's such a great accomplishment over 1400 trades or something he's up like 200 percent and I, I tell that story 
because I want you guys to understand the commitment level that's really involved with this. You are going through a course that is designed to be three months long. But your training doesn't stop once the course is over. You're, you, are not, you don't suddenly magically take care of all of your psychological and emotional problems as soon as the three months are up. What you have to do is you have to remain diligent. And that's why I tell you guys, you, you gotta, you got to love this like you love breathing. right? You really do. Because if you don't have that kind of love and passion for it, what ends up happening is, is, is you realize, hey, this is, a, this is difficult. This is, it is tough for me to come in, and I have really great days, and I have really terrible days, and the, the emotional roller coaster that I am on many times and, uh, is just, if you don't love it, then it's, it's never going to work for you. You're always going to be finding a reason not to do it and not to go out and, and not, to, not to get behind the screen, and, and you'll be searching for the next shiny object that comes along or the next system or the next guy or or, or company that's promising you what you want to hear in order to become the type of person you want to be. And there, we can shortcut the process for you here by giving you some tools that n nobody else is really going to give you, and by working with you and, and, uh, and focusing heavily on the psychology piece, which is really going to be the struggle for most of you. But that's the extent of what we can do. The, the rest of it is you coming in every day and being disciplined and trading it. And what Paul's story tells us all is that anybody can do it. Even if you are dealing with incredible loss and struggle in your, in your personal life. Even if you are working at the top of your game in whatever field that you're in, because I'm going to tell you right now, Paul is at the very, very, very top of his field. He is highly sought after and very busy, and he has managed to, over the course of a few years, become a consistent, profitable trader. Not just a little profitable, he's been really profitable. And you think about that for a minute. And you think about how many of you, this is, I ask this question a lot, but I'll ask it to you here because we're, we're together. How many of you consider yourself to be an expert at what it is that you do? Whatever your, your current day job is, who here is a, an expert? And then the second question I ask right in behind that is, all right, how many years did it take you to get there? How many years before you showed up and you're like, man, I'm really the, I'm really the guy who knows stuff around here? I'm the guy who people come to and, and ask questions to. I'm the most senior guy. Oh, you guys are quick. Three years, five years? That's closer, I would say, somewhere around five to ten years in most industries. Sometimes it's even heavier. If you get into one of these, uh, one of these really kind of journeyman type of jobs, it can be 15, 20 years before you're the most senior, most knowledgeable guy where you feel like, hey, I, I actually know what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm an expert at what I do. So I look at stuff like that, and what happens is those all of you guys who are really successful at what you do is that we think that that just transfers over. We forget, because now we're experts at whatever field we're, of, of endeavor that we're in, we forget how many years of struggle, how many years of confusion it took to get there. And we think now that we're pretty good at this, well, we can be pretty good at anything. And then we try and transfer all of that, I guess, all of that pride and, and all of that, uh, oh, I guess, uh, sense of accomplishment from one thing to another. And we bring it into our trading. And then we find out really quickly, this is a whole new game. And although you are probably better qualified than most to be successful at this, it is still going to take you several years to get to a point where this becomes second nature. Guys do it faster than that. I'm not going to tell you, well, everybody's got to be in the long haul for a decade before you're going to make any money. That's, that's not true. But you do have to be prepared for more than a month, three months, six months of figuring this thing out, of, of learning and, and exercising your, your trading brain and, and your trading knowledge in order to find a strategy that works for you, in order to find kind of a, a, a process that works for you. 
And that's just part of doing what you're doing. And I'm really proud of you for being here. I, I got to tell you that because most people will not commit even a fraction of the time and energy that you guys are committing to this. And yeah, I'm, I am proud to be able to come here and share with you and work with you and teach you what I know. And I know that Akil, I know that Jason Greystone, I know that Charles feel the same way. Um, we consider what we do a blessing. And we have worked really, really hard to focus on people who we think are going to be successful at this. We do our very best to repel all the tire kickers and trading trolls and all of those folks that really are destined for failure. And we try and hone in on the 20% that we think are going to be highly successful by simply delivering a message that only those type of people would respond to. And you guys are the ones that filtered through. You guys were the ones that, that made it over all of our, uh, all of our uh, I guess, our, our intentions to repel you. And now it's just time to get down to brass tacks. It's time for us to share information with you that you're not probably going to want to hear, but that you need to hear and you need to understand. And money management is this piece that comes at the very end. It's like the, uh, my, my, I took my Mother's Day. We went out for Mother's Day. We went down to Fogo de Chao at uh, the plaza here in Kansas City. If you've ever been down there, it's a beautiful old area of town. Fogo sits right on this uh, on this uh, peninsula corner. And right around the corner from that is a cupcake place. And my wife absolutely loves the cupcakes down there. And we went in and uh, ordered a bunch of cupcakes. I don't know, I spent like four or $500 for dinner that day to feed my whole family. We go around the corner and we end up polishing the meal off with some cupcakes. And my daughter gets this cupcake and she wants to sit outside because the weather is beautiful. So I take my, my five-year-old daughter out and everybody else is inside, but she and I are sitting outside and I watch her start to devour this cupcake. And she doesn't attack the bread at all. She just starts licking the frosting off. And initially I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, it's hard to get that whole cupcake in your mouth because the cupcakes are big. So she's probably eating her way down to the bread. And then as we got closer to her finishing up, I realized I don't think she's going to touch the actual cupcake. She's just licked all the frosting off. And I asked her, I said, you going to gonna eat any of, that, uh, any of that cupcake? And she said, no, nah, I don't like the bread. I just like the frosting. And I said, yeah, all right. I mean, Bread's nothing but carbs anyway, and sugar. <laughs> Might as well just <laughs> lick the frosting off the top. But money management is, it's the frosting to your, uh, to your cupcake, so to speak. It's all good, but without the actual cupcake, it's really just a big pile of frosting, right? It's not exactly the same thing. So what I want you to do is I want you to, I want you to go through the entire process of of baking the cupcake, right? Of adding the ingredients in, of understanding the process. And then at the very end, you get to put the frosting on the top that just really transforms this really delicious treat into something spectacular. All right, traders, so I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please show us by hitting that like button and subscribing by clicking the button right below. If you're looking for more educational content, feel free to head over to our tradeempower.com website, or also take a look, and you'll see more videos available for you. Have a good one.